Greetings, greetings, greetings. What's up? On this particular episode, uh, I wanted to talk about devil worship in respect to um, popular culture. Um, I get a lot of questions from people. Uh, they want to know my views and take on different um, entertainers and different public figures. And they want to know, like, is it true that they have to essentially worship the devil or worship something evil to become famous and to get popular? Do they, uh, do they essentially have to sell their soul for money and wealth? Um, and that's what I'm going to speak on. Uh, first thing I would do is just try to educate you guys on the devil, helping you to understand the devil versus Lucifer and breaking those terms down. Um, as I've said in many other videos, of course, when you go into the definition of devil, devil just essentially means one who is rebellious, one who is, it represents a form of strength on the material side of things, where you research devil, like, as far as from a metaphysical perspective, minus the religion. Um, now, of course, in religion, the term devil means adversary, uh, one who is against good, one who is evil. In the term devil, you see the evil. So that's kind of like the definition of it. Now, um, there is a difference between the devil and Lucifer. Um, now, Lucifer, when you research the term Lucifer, Lucifer goes into the light bearer. Lucifer is the light bringer. Lucifer literally means to illuminate. And Lucifer used to be one of the angels according to biblical texts. Lucifer was a fallen angel of God, of, the, of this group of gods, you can say. And what happened with Lucifer was is that he wanted to, excuse me, he wanted to essentially, basically establish uh, his own government and a system of autonomy. And he wanted to essentially exist in his own realm, hence make his own rules. So he was supposedly kicked out of heaven in biblical texts. However, when you research Lucifer from a metaphysical perspective, uh, it will lead you to a particular story about a council or a group of beings called the Luciferians. And these particular you know, people that study Dr. York, of course, you are very familiar with this. Um, actually, from my research of the Sumerian tablets, this is where I got this information from, so it's not like I'm making this up on my head. However, that story came from the Sumerian tablets. And uh, Lucifer is equivalent to a deity by the name of Tarnush. And essentially what happened with Tarnush was is that he was a part of this order that you would call Luciferians in this day and time, but it's Greek. And this order existed in the star constellation of Sirius, and in the star constellation, he was of number three in his order, as far as the ranking is concerned, and his father was number two, and the number one person in rank was who you know as Melchizedek. Um, some people call him Murdoch, um, but Melchizedek was the ranking, the top ranking angel in this particular order and what happened was is that Tarnoosh he disagreed well his father him and his father disagreed with the rule of Melchizedek so what happened was is that they were kicked out of the heavens but not only them but they had a group of under them and they were all kicked out of the heavens and they were cast into the realm of Orion which is very important so this goes into the story of Satan and Lucifer this is the true meaning of Satan and Lucifer so Lucifer and Satan live, begin to live in Orion for periods of time and they establish kingdom and dominion in Orion. 
And there's a lot to the story, you know, that I teach on in my particular classes that I offer um, for people that learn astrology. But I just kind of want to put this information out because it's going somewhere. I'm going to start talking about this, how this affects our society and politics and music and film and things of that nature. But just follow me here. So he was cast out into this constellation of Orion. And in this constellation of Orion, this is where material things begin to take precedence over spiritual things. See, in Sirius, Sirius constellation, star constellation, they were spiritual beings. They, they had materials. There were beings that manifested in the material realm. However, the spiritual realm ruled over the material realm. And what happened was is that Carnusha's father, or Lucifer's father, which you may know as Satan, his name is Humbaba in these particular texts, he didn't believe that there was an unseen world. He started, he stopped believing in all of that. He felt like the council was duping people. He felt like the only realm was the physical realm. He wanted to establish a more dominant, uh, a more dominant government in the physical realm. And the council basically voted against that, so he was cast out. And that's where you get the story of him getting kicked out of the heavens. So he went into Orion and mingled with beings in Orion. He established government in Orion. And then eventually he moved into Saturn over time. I mean, when I say, I mean, these is, this is a thousand year period. You have to remember, like the Bible says, a day to God is like a thousand of our years. So like, this may have took place in a few days in that particular realm or that time space. But this could have took thousands of years in our time reference. I mean, so over time he went into Saturn and he went into an established kingdom on the moon of Saturn, which is called Titan, over a period of time. And he set up governments there. I mean, he set up governments on the missing planet called Meldek. Some of you may know it as Vulcan. I still have to do a video on Vulcan to better explain that. But at the end of the day, he began this material thing. He was a materialist. That's essentially what he was. And this material thing began to take precedence over light beings. It began to take precedence over, I guess you can say, not just light beings, but beings of the astral realm. So he was all about a taking light, a certain type of light, because there's two different types of lights. There's amber light and there's green light. Amber light is like a decayed version of pure light. What we see here on this planet, this is considered amber light for the most part. It's kind of like sunlight in comparison to fire. Fire is considered amber light. When you set a fire to create light, and sunlight would be considered etheric, pure light. That's an example of it, but it gets deeper than that. Because really our sun, essentially, can be considered amber light compared to other astral lights that are out there in the universe. So he established this whole thing up under amber light. That was his thing. And in amber light, this is where material things thrive at. This is where material things dominate at. So this is the true story of Satan and Lucifer. Satan was the father and Lucifer took on where Satan left off at. Now there are different groups. There are groups of Satanists and there are groups of Luciferians and that's what we're going to get into now. In society right now walking around. Now Satanists, like people try to say like a lot of people in the church, like they say the Pope really believes in Satan. You got all these videos going around saying that the Pope is a Satanist. The Pope really believes in Satan and he really doesn't believe in God. And you can kind of say that's true because in the Bible, and he knows this, you know, but they don't want people to know this. But in the Bible, it talks about heaven as being in a realm called Oranos. I've said this many millions of times, but now I'm going to connect the dots. If you remember what I was just speaking on earlier. So Oranos literally translates to Orion, but that's the word that they use for heaven in Greek. If you study the Bible, in the, this is in the New Testament. The New Testament was revealed in Greek first before it was translated into English. So the New Testament, they refer to heaven as Oranos. And this is the, the New Testament is what the Christians predominantly use to, you know, as their book. I mean, they believe in the Old Testament, but the New Testament, that's, you know, that's about Christ. And they say that God exists in Orion or heaven. Right? And Orion, or Oranos, and Oranos translates to Orion, this is a star constellation. And this is where, if you remember just a minute ago, I said this is where the Satanists and Luciferians set, set up kingdoms at. 
So, just like some hot top level metaphysicians teach, what if the God that you think you worshiping as God is really Satan? And then they say people like us, the New Agers that teach on the Ethereans and teach on beings that came to this realm to activate higher senses and to teach us awareness and to get us in tune with the higher levels of existence, they call us Satanists. They call light workers, and there are light workers that are Satanists, but some are or some are, but they call us Satanists, but the thing is flipped. You see, because a lot of Christians don't realize that what they believe in and the entities that they worship, they all come from Orion. That's called the Orion group. And the Orion group, they're materialists. Very much materialists. And real life spiritual adepts and spiritual teachings and spiritual people are past the realm of material. They are not locked into this paradigm of materialism. So it gets interesting. So like a lot of people in religion essentially, people ain't gonna really want to hear this, but they worship they're part of the Satanist movement. They talk about the church of Satan and saying, Well, that's the only Satanist movement we know about. That's the they're outward with it. But these religious people, these scholars that have studied the Bible, and I mean these are top level scholars. I mean you gotta know the Bible in and out. They have studied the Bible in other languages, they know what I'm talking about. They literally worship Satan because Satan is a group of beings. So I don't say that from a perspective of like, you could call it evil, but evil is considered anything material to a spiritual being, to a spiritual adept. Anything that traps you or confines you to the material realm is considered evil to a spiritual being. You see, so that's evil, period. So anything, remember I just defined the words at the beginning of the video and I said Satan represents evil. Well, that's anything that confines you to the material room. That's considered evil. You see, so they say that's why they say Christ died for my sins because we came into this flesh. And the only way to get free is to accept the blood of Christ because he had to die. Because they consider the flesh evil. Everything of the flesh is you were born in what? Sin and shaped in iniquity, according to your Bible. This is what you say. So that means everything, if you, they, as soon as you're born here, you're considered evil. And the only way out of it is to die. That's why they accept the blood of Christ and say, when I die, as long as I accepted the blood of Christ, then I'll be free from my sin. Doesn't let you know that you are locked in the evil, and the beings that set up this realm are evil. And, and Christians, they know they love this world. You love material things. You love money. So, from your definition, I'm saying you consider. I don't consider this stuff evil. That's what I'm saying from your definition. I just consider it all an experience. But I have to teach you on your level so that you can understand. So that's what a Satanist is. You see, a Satanist is one who worships, or who worships beings that are caught up in the material realm or from Orion. All religions were set up by the Orion group, even going back to the Old Testament. We study Mosesism, or what you may call Hebrewism, or some people may call Judaism, or Jews, but that goes back even further than Jews. That's all based on, that's all based on the, the Satanist movement. And the Pope knows this. Pope, they understand Judaism. The Pope wears a yarmulke. And at the same time, even in Islam, the Pope worships Fatima, one of the daughters of Prophet Muhammad. I mean, it's a lot of stuff that people don't fail to realize about the Pope. And I'm not, I'm, it's not about me judging anybody. These are the facts. And I'm going to say them clearly because I can't, I can do that because the order that I'm initiated into as being Native Americans, we are to teach the truth. That's our job. There are some people that can't say, and they may know, and they got to keep their lips closed, and they can't say certain things. But we are, we have to teach the truth, regardless of circumstance, according to my order that I'm a part of, which is a whole other story. So we speak truth regardless of consequence. So the Satanists, that's the Satanist aspect. Then you got the Luciferians. Now what happened was that Lucifer or what some people may call Tarnoosh, he began to, this goes into the story of the dragon, which is a whole other story, but just talking about Tarnoosh and from the context of Lucifer, I had to make another video specifically about Tarnoosh to help you to understand how he ties into the dragon, but he began, this is not the same as the Satanists. The Luciferians began to branch off and go in a different direction, and they were obsessed with energy. See, Satanists are obsessed with control over materials, total control over life, money, anything material, resources, gold. This is why the Catholic Church in the Vatican City has more wealth than any 
person, one person in the world. This is how they're so dominant because they essentially are concerned with materials. Whether don't let them tell you anything different. That's why they got so much damn money. They ain't giving it away to nobody, so obviously they can they obsessed with it. So the Luciferians, they are more so into energy. Um and Luciferians are like kinda like, you know, they could be considered like Buddhists, people to study that. Anybody that's in, in obsessed with energy and like really to a point like feng shui and, and like what's taught in Eastern philosophy, this is considered Luciferianism and it's not bad. It's only bad to people that have programs for alarms to go off when they hear Lucifer is Satan, ding 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 ding, ring the alarm, they worshiping the devil. That's it's only bad to you. But people that's open minded and understand what I'm talking about and just understand the terms, don't speak it on the terms, not judgment. This is what they do. This is what they're obsessed with. So they care about energy and manifesting things through energy. So they say that the Luciferians, they essentially are the ones that want your soul because your soul is possessed of energy. And the Satanists, they want to control you. They put mind control over you. You have to sell your soul. This is why in religion, they don't believe in selling the soul. But then they say like in different like Hollywood and if you get involved with different politicians and things of that nature they say well, you got to sell your soul to do that in a way you do have to give some energy to be a part of these different orders you got to give some you see and that's what a lot of if you notice a lot of new age people like say for instance like people like uh, actors and stuff like uh, Angelina Jolie and Kanye West and Kim Kardashian and Oprah Winfrey these people they're obsessed with energy. Like when you used to watch the Oprah Winfrey show, every color that she used, she knows that that's emitting a certain energy to get your attention. So their energy, they see energy. This is a Luciferian type of thing. And a lot of people don't really want to hear this. They don't want to hear this publicly, but Ron Hotel will teach the facts, man, regardless. So this is a Luciferian type of thing. So yeah, to get involved with politicians, they're obsessed with energy. They want your energy. One time, like I tell all my students, I use this as an example. I listened to this this Lady Gaga concert from on. It was uh, being launched from like overseas somewhere. And she was like, "You don't have to pay to get in here. We just want we don't want your money. We want your energy." Even though they did pay to get up in there, because money is energy. But she just said, "At the end of the day, as long as you come and keep giving me energy, I'm gonna keep doing what I'm doing because, and I'm gonna keep becoming big." Because the fact that you gave your energy, I mean, you don't have to stay with me after it's over. You can go back to church, do whatever you do. I don't want to control you. That's what the Satanists want to do. I just want your energy. So essentially, when they talk about like people, because this is another thing people wanted me to address, about celebrities saying that they got to do what's called ride the goat to get a deal. A lot of times, some depending on it depends on the master of ceremony or what the producer of the particular show and what he or she may want you to do to get down with them. But everybody wants some energy. Everybody wants something. Like Nas said, street dreams are made of things. Everybody's looking for something. Everybody's looking for something. And when you're dealing with money and people that got a lot of resources, so some of them may make you do what's called sit on a director's couch. And males got to do it with other males. And they consider that, or they call that riding the goat. Well, a man got to get penetrated by another man. I'm going to talk about this publicly because I can so yeah there are that's going down but do you have to do that to get a deal not necessarily but it depends on your energy you see like some people do it some people don't it depends on what you know about the call how you're able to demonstrate yourself that's what we call it in the temple demonstrating yourself so the, the less you know the more they're going to feed into your ignorance and your naivety and your obsession with things and your attraction to light, bright lights because they're Luciferian. That's why it's all lights, camera, action. It's all this lights associated with the industry. So it's like, essentially, I must make this point and I'll shut down. So essentially, the way you can kind of look at it is, is like the Luciferians are like the politicians, you know, all, all levels, people that's involved with music. A lot of them are Luciferian. They, they want energy. they vampires. They want energy. They want something from you. Um, People that are involved in film, a lot of them, they're Luciferian. They can tell you they believe in God, whatever the case may be. But remember, remember the definitions I've taught you. And at the end of the day, they want something. you got to exchange. it got to be an energy exchange. And like, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but I have to help you to understand things so that when you get into this realm as a star seed, you're able to identify what's going on or what's what.
And remember, the Satanists, there are Satanists in the industry too, though. Some people do do in the music industry. I'm not saying all religious people are only Satan, Satanists. Remember, the Satanists want total control. This is why when you come to church, what do they want you to do? They want you to join. So they can control you totally. They want you to join. They want you to participate. Get part of different programs. you got to go eat dinner with the people in the church. Your whole life is revolved around the church. That's con total control. They want total control over your body. Remember, Luciferians, you can, as long as you're doing energy exchanges, they don't care what you do outside of your contract. Like, as long as you're doing what you got to do in reference to the energy exchange that you signed, signed up for in your contract, Outside of that, they don't care if you go to church or if you're part of this organization or you part of Scientology or you may be a part of the New Age movement. You may be considered a part of the Star Seed movement. They don't care about that. At the end of the day, the only thing they care about is that exchange, Luciferian. They just want to keep getting energy from, and they get it from other sources too. Some get it from people. They get it from nature. That's still considered Luciferian. And they get energy from different sources, and that's what you need to thrive here on this plane. So. Maybe I'll do a part two and talk about helping you to make decisions on, I guess, which path may be best for you, but you got to know these things. So that's the difference. This is what's really going on in behind the scenes in the industry and in the world stage. you got to understand the world stage if you want to find your life purpose in it. You have to first understand how things work. Like my man Jordan Maxwell says, people are failures because they don't know the way the world works. Shout out to Jordan, man. Ever since he, he quoted that love saying that over and over again, because it's the truth, man. Like, if you knew the way the world works, then you wouldn't be so much caught up in victim mentality. You would be able to make better decisions, and you will find your place in it a lot easier. So I guess I, guess I got to start teaching on the way the world works. So people, Because people want to be musicians. They want to sign record deals and things of that nature. So you got to know. So I hope that helped. Um, I thank you guys for listening and watching. Um, into my next video, to my next episode and segment, I'm going to go ahead and shut down. And I'll leave you with good energy, peace, hotel, namaste, why do? Talk my hood, niggas, we out.